In British India, Hindu identity was a thing to hide. For India's oldest living people, being Hindu was once a hidden affair. As colonial subjects, Hindus learned to accept, or at least to not publicly contest, the basic premise of the British civilizing mission, which saw in Indian culture and Hindu religion as vastly inferior to its European counterpart. For much of the colonial era, Hindus held their religion back from the public eye, submerging it in private rituals. Hinduism, after all, is a myth. In the early 20th century, Gandhi was the first one, who tried to bring it to public life, posing it at par with Islam, in the context of botched Hindu-Muslim unity. The attempt, however, was quashed due to the staunch secularist, Nehruvian, doctrine of the first Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. For the next several decades, Nehruvian secularism dominated India's intellectual life. Despite the vibrant practice of Hinduism in temples, daily life, and festivals, there was no appetite or courage shown by Hindus in public understanding of it. Nehruvian idea of India an imagined secular, pluralist polity that belongs to all Indians and not to any one group, i.e. Hindu majority. India was created as pluralist opposed to Hindu majoritarian, particularistic, nationalism. Indian secularism has gone down the drain due to the growing incidence of communal conflicts in various parts of India involving Hindu extremists, and particularly the occurrences of Godra train burning and burning of thousands of Muslims alive in Gujarat. Under the auspices of current PM Modi, Hindu extremism has changed the character of India forever to that of a Hindu terrorist state. Particularism of Hindutva transformed by RSS into violent extremism. BJP a subsidiary of Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sang, RSS, for long has been calling on the Indian governments to recognize the special rights of the Hindu majority in a Hindu majority country. Now with the advent of BJP's rise to become India's governing party, the idea of India is being redefined to mean a Hindu polity. Through acts of violence as well as words and laws, Hindu extremists are pressing not whether the country's political system should recognize Hindu identity, but the precise way in which it should be recognized. This concept of Hindu majoritarianism or the preeminence of Hinduism has been in progress right from the time of Indira Gandhi down to Rajiv, Vajpayee, Modi and is bound to perpetuate in more violence after the 2019 parliamentary elections, regardless of who wins or who loses. Muslims would, therefore, be naive not to reevaluate their position and prepare accordingly. HTTPS colon slash slash Shakir2.wordpress.com slash 2018 slash 04 slash 02 slash Indian Muslims and Conquest of Mecca slash. A burst of Hindu extremism, the rise of a Hindu government espousing extremism, is a reactionary slash retaliatory expression against centuries old repression, caused by sustained, enduring and taxing dynastic subjugation by the kings, dukes, rajas. It permeated through and through in Hindu psyche as an inferiority complex they are now revolting against it by way of extremism. This is best expressed by Hyderabadis, where everyone claims to be the descendant of a Nizam, as if all the courtiers and the ordinary subjects just vanished into thin air, at the end of a soft Jahi dynasty. In an Indian concocted zeitgeist, a diverse collection of Indians, are now looking for an identity to arm themselves like that of an anglicized elite. It simply expresses an ingrained psychological, cultural and religious inferiority, making them fit the famous proverbial expression, a crow pretended to walk like a stark but forgot even his own. At one hand, an Indian woman would take pride in having an affair with a white man, acting like a white woman and awkwardly using western slangs to fit in. On the other hand, a Gujarati man would be, walking in the winter, wearing a sleeveless sweater, socks and muffler but flip-flop underneath or donned with a three-piece suit and a party but jogging shoes underneath. Come on, give me a break. India to an extent, nevertheless, is the beneficiary of this psychologically inert state. Indian Muslims have been force-fed the goodness of botched secular India, due to which, despite once having been considered to be the best Muslim, they vitiated their religion and took pride in being called Indian instead. Result, despite facing sustained and designed discrimination and humiliation, never mustered the courage to embark on a resistance or separatist movement, like many others in 22 of the Indian states. As stated earlier, Firstly, Hindu psychological holdbacks would never allow them, despite, supposedly, having attained the Hindu majoritarian identity, to equate with their counterparts in the global setting. Secondly, it is highly unlikely, given the internal and external dynamics, that India would ever become an economic power as wishfully hyped. Thirdly, Muslim India sure had glorious past but it was neither Hindu India nor Hinduism. Fourthly, Hindu majoritarian identity, admittedly, would prove to be elusive and imaginary for the winners and communal for the losers, at best, unless the balkanization of coerced Indian Union takes place. 
equating Diwali with Christmas and Ramayana with Bible is albeit euphoric but delusional. Recognition of preeminence of Hindu majoritarian identity, given the Punjab and Kashmir almost slipped out of Indian control, would simply spur the process of India's balkanization. Many other among the equals would not allow the usurpation of their ancestral and birthrights to their land country and assignment of it to Hindu majority. They are already up in arms against the covert privileged Hinduism, the status being sought by Hindu extremists through the Citizenship Amendment Bill, currently under consideration in the Parliament. Passing it would justify forced conversion of non-Hindus, especially the Muslims to Hinduism. Hindu extremist rhetoric, foisted by RSS, BJP, Vishwa Hindu Parishad and Hindutva, has transformed into violent activism. Godra train burning and burning Muslims alive in Gujarat, under the auspices of Narendra Modi, PM, and many subsequent lynching of Muslims and other minorities, all over India are barbaric examples of it. The proponents of the Hindu majoritarianism ought to bear in mind that Hinduism does not brace a prospering future. Because, after all, it is a mythology carved out of monotheistic persuasion. Vouchsafed in Puranas and Vedas. Hensker Wapsi, back to home, should be taken seriously by the Hindu majority, not by the Muslim and other minorities. Younger, educated generation, all across the world, is drifting away from the mythologies, philosophies and even interpolated, and abrogated, divine religions due to their human-adduced illogical and unappealing contents. Latest update November 13, 2020. A Promised Land, Obama's book released on November, 17, 2020. In November 2010, Moon Mohan Singh told him that he feared rising anti-Muslim sentiment had strengthened the influence of Hindu nationalist BJP. Obama quoted Singh as saying that the call of religious and ethnic solidarity can be intoxicating for politicians, particularly in a country like India, which was still wrecked by poverty, wealth inequality, violence and ultranationalism. Violence, both public and private, remained an all-too-pervasive part of Indian life. Expressing hostility towards Pakistan was still the quickest route to national unity, Obama wrote. HTTPS colon slash slash shakir2.wordpress.com slash 2017 slash 09 slash 25 slash balkanization of India slash HTTPS colon slash slash shakir2.wordpress.com slash 2015 slash 10 slash 09 slash Indian Hindu mob lynches a Muslim on just a rumor about beef slash save Rohingya, fur, Palestinian and Kashmiri Muslim from state-sponsored genocide. Reclaim Africa, a Muslim continent. Use and share this slogan as often as possible.